All right. Second Chronicles chapter 10. And Rehoboam went to Shechem for all to Shechem where all okay. Rehoboam went to Shechem for to Shechem where all Israel come to make him king. Uh, it's kind of funny because the temple is in Jerusalem. The priests are in J Jerusalem. The brazen altar is in Jerusalem. The ark is in Jerusalem, but they run to Shechem. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat. By the way, uh, Solomon was anointed in Jerusalem by David his father. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whether he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, that Jeroboam, Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And you can get the story in 1 Kings chapter 12. Uh, Jeroboam runs from King Solomon. Solomon's dead. Rehoboam is now king. Jeroboam comes back. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came to, and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. You get, uh, you get kind of a story here. What's going on now is Solomon was a little hard on the people. And the story could be a little, you know, stretched out a little bit more than it is. I mean, man likes to add more, to, more inches to the fish that he caught. But there was a problem. Now, therefore, ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he's not asking for all the burden to be lifted up. He's asking this to be lightened. Lessen up. Loosen up. Too hard. And then we'll serve thee if, if you'll help us. And he said unto them, and it's kind of funny because in America, if you read your Bible, you know that the Antichrist is coming. And you know that his office will be to tax and the tax and the retax. And America is to the point right now that starting January 1st next year, if you ain't got health insurance, they're going to add a tax to you. And they're going to tax you for this and they're going to tax you for that with top of all the taxes that they're doing. And they're not making it lighter for the people. Now Solomon will put tribute on him. He put taxes on him. He put a workload on him. He sent Jews off to go cut trees. He he had the Jews do work. He uh, had money had to come in to pay for the work. And we read what he what he gave Hiram. Gave him food. He gave him wheat. He gave him all kinds of things. Well, it cost money. It does cost money to run a government. And Jesus said, "Render to Caesar that is which is Caesar." And rendered to God what that is God, Romans 13, and Peter tells us we're to support the government because it costs money to run. Jeroboam saying this, it's too hard for us. We're not asking for complete. We're just asking, just, just lighten the load. And he said unto them, come again unto me after three days. Why does three days keep showing up in your Bible? I mean, you got a number from one to quadrillion. It's always three days. And, you know, when it comes to resurrection, you know, that, you know, Good Friday and Easter, where they can't get it, they say that, oh, it wasn't literal three days. Haven't you read your Bible? Three days, three days, three days, three days, three days. God is telling you, three days. Only an idiot will tell you, Two days, or one day, or how many days? Three days is an important thing to mark in your Bible. And the people departed. There's no rebellion. Come back three days. Okay, we'll come back. Everyone go home. 
They're not making fun of the king. They're not calling him names. They're in complete servitude. They're obeying. Even under bondage, even under a heavy weight, they still listen to the king and obey him. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while yet he while he yet lived. Very proper to do. I mean, these are the men that work with Solomon. These are the men that live with Solomon. These men that were the ones that Solomon uh, knew what Solomon's office was, knew how Solomon taxed the people, knew how Solomon uh, put the jobs out there. They had full understanding of what was going on. Where they could tell the king, say, listen, yes, your father was heavy on this thing. But your father was light on this thing. And maybe if you change this, I mean, he sought perfect counsel. He's young. He doesn't know any better. And he goes with men of experience. What counsel give ye me to render answer to this people? And they spake unto him, saying, that thou be kind to this people. You don't need to be a dictator. You don't need to be hard. You know, we're to be kind. But the way the world is, the way the world is entered in church, when you tell someone they're going to hell, oh, that's not kind. Of, no, it's the truth. And the truth hurts. But you're to be kind. You're to have manners. You're to be proper. And please them. Now that's not let them have their own way. That's not giving them free liberty to do anything they want. Please them is lighten the load. Help them. So what the guys are saying is the wise men of Solomon saying, yeah, lighten the load. So you know but what Jeroboam is coming to the king. You know it's a perfectly well documented fact that these guys that were with Solomon is like, yeah, you need, to, you need to fix something here. There is bondage. And speak good words to them. Now every Baptist preacher and every Baptist will love you. Oh, speak sugar, 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 sweet, sugar, sugar, taffy, chocolate, sugar, sugar. And you end up with a diabetic church. You know, there's salt. Salt hurts when it's in a boo-boo. You know how many minerals and, and uh, vitamins and stuff out there? Iodine is a mineral and it hurts a boo-boo. And yet, there's sugar, the proper amount of sugar, and you can survive. But you'll die without salt. Your body needs salt. I don't really don't know if your body absolutely needs sugar. Because fruits and vegetables has a sugar that's not the, the sugar in candy. It's a fiber kind of sugar. For the uh, calories you need to burn. Won't be to a church that's all sugar. Because you're going to have to start shooting up your arm with this one. The diabetic church. Speak good words to them. You know, when, when you're dealing with somebody about the Lord, whether they're lost, whether they're saved, listen, use the Bible. That's good words. Show them our scripture. At least they can't blame you and they blame the book. They will be thy servants forever. So that's pretty that's pretty good advice. When you put it down and you don't change you don't put the world into it. It's very good advice. And again, it's not give over to them and let them have control of you. That's not the kind. That's not what they're saying. They're admitting that there is a problem. And listen, lighten the people up a little bit. Help them out. 
But, you know, there are good buts and bad buts in the Bible. This is a bad but. A good but in the Bible is usually but God. That's a good but. Sometimes. Most of the time it's a good but. This but, but he forsook the counsel which the old man gave him. And it doesn't tell you why. What was it that he didn't like? And took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him. That stood before him. All the ones that you know, he went to school with. The idiots that don't know nothing. I was amazed when I worked for the newspaper. How many times the newspaper printed opinions by six and seven year old kids. What opinion do they have to have? These kids have not learned nothing. They're wet behind the ears. They don't know. They'll go out there today. Kids will go out there. They'll buy that big fancy sports car. You know, you know, red and four on the floor and does 120. You know, the speed limit's 55. And then they get married. It's a two seater, and they have a baby. Uh oh. Well, I, 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 I. I got payments for six years. What do I do? You ought to listen to Dad. Dad would say, before you get that expensive car, if you want a family, you better get a bigger car. That car will eat a lot of gas, eat a lot of your paycheck. But he don't listen to the older ones. He does what, what the kids do. They waste all their money. I'm 44 years old today. I wish I had the money that, uh, the time I lived with these guys at their age. And then use it foolishly and then do it stupidly. But I didn't listen either. And no teenage, no young adult, male or female, don't listen to their olders. And when you get my age, you're like, I wish I would have listened. And you raise your kids, you look at them, they don't listen. And they're going to grow up and you know what's going to happen. They're going to say, I wish I had listened. They're going to have kids. They're going to say, they're not going to listen. This is the wrong thing to do. These guys, uh, he goes to, they don't know how to run a government. They probably just got out of Papa's house. Probably never paid a bill in their life. They ever wrote a check? You know, stupid things I heard with these kids in college one time, they were giving them all free credit cards. And then they wonder why, you know, before they're even out of college, they're going bankrupt. I went and bought everything I wanted, the, the radio and all this other junk. He does something stupid here. And he said unto them, What advice give ye that we may return answer this people, which have spoken to me, saying, Ease somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us. Notice he tells these, he tells these young farts what the problem is, and he didn't tell the old men what the problem was. He gives, he gives the young man a little more help. And the young men, notice I keep saying young men, notice that God puts that in there. Young men that were brought up with him spank unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto him, My little finger, the little pinky, shall be thicker than my father's loins. What? That's not even double. I don't even know. Your loins are, are I don't even know how bigger than your pinky. Stupid advice. I'm not going to charge you 25 cents for a Hershey bar. I'm going to charge you Buck twenty-five. I remember when when, when Mama gave me a couple of dollars to go buy milk. I had enough money over to buy a candy bar. I remember when ten dollars would fill the tank. Oh, man. I'm old man.
But compared to prices, what my mom and dad told me, they were a pinky and I got a thigh. Well, the prices today is the whole body. You say, well, you know, times have changed, have not changed. Unless you're unionized, you want 26 bucks an hour and every holiday off and every hour off or break in a lunch period. A little finger bigger than my than my father. Wow, moron! Needs to wear a stupid sign. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, he is mitten. They are admitting. That Solomon put a big weight on him. And he remember the guy's told him said, speak speak proper unto him, speak wise to him, speak right to them. And he's gonna go to the people who's gonna say, My father made you heavy, but I'm gonna make it well, yeah, right. Great words, you moron. Whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. Why would you do that? Why would you give stupid advice? My father chasing you with whips? Ouch. But I will chase you with scorpions. You mean death. I learned this guy and these kids never studied Egypt 101. Exodus 101. That's how smart they were. They didn't study the, the history of the Jews. Now the Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, they served with rigor, and that wasn't the guy's name. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king bade them, saying, Come again to me on the third day. Well, that third day just keeps coming up. And the king answered them roughly. That's not what the old man told him to do. See, he didn't. When the old man spoke and said, speak good words on him and please him, and the, 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 the wise men then said, You are a No, the wise men were saying, Attention, all people of Israel. I got a message for you. This is my answer. I understand that you have a problem. I have counseled with the wise men, and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate all the unnecessary taxes, all the unnecessary work that has been put upon you guys. Give me time and we'll work it out. This guy walks in there and he says, he answered roughly, the Bible said. And King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men. The God and the Holy Spirit is telling you exactly what they were telling Rehoboam. They weren't telling him to, you know, be wishy-washy kind of government. and let them, No, he's saying by speaking roughly, that's not what the wise men wanted them to do. And answer them after the advice of the young men. Same. Now, taking that roughly, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add there too. I'm going to make it more. Come cry baby to me, you little wimps. You wait to see what I'm going to do to you. My father chasing you with whips, but I will chasten you with scorpions. How he answered him. Said he answered him roughly. So the king hearkened not unto the people. For the cause was of God. Well, look at that. Look at that. You mean God can drive a nation down to the ground? This is Israel. This is the ones that God loved. This is God's nation. And he purposely made the king. Do something that's going to break the nation. God done it. 
America is ruined. Oh, whoa, we got to have a revival. Maybe God's doing it because you, the church, are at fault. No, we got a bad president. No, where were you when they allowed the monkey trial? Where was the Christians standing up? Where was the Christians when they took the Bible out of school? Where were the Christians when they took prayer out of the school? Where were you Christians? We had in the last few years million men this, a million men that, and a million women this on the White House. Where were you Christians? My understanding, the Skull Smokey Child, they had a Christian there that didn't know nothing. I don't blame the politics of America. I blame the church for where America is today. Because the church has failed. Look at the church signs where you pass down the street. Foolishness. God was in charge of this. God told Jeroboam through one of his prophets, you're going to be the ringleader. You're going to be the king of Israel. Ten tribes, right? Yes. And God already knew what kind of king Jeroboam was going to be. Instead of bad mouth from the president of the United States, why don't you get down on your knees and pray for his soul? Why don't you call one church night and say, get everybody in church, get on your knees, and pay for the president, for his soul, and for his wife, and for his two daughters. You know it's a sin, bad mouth from the president, because if you don't know that, you haven't read the scriptures. Makes me mad when, when people act like they do for the leader of this country when you're supposed to be praying for the people. I saw today on Facebook someone had a picture of Obama going down the slide into hell. What kind of fool are you? I don't want to see anybody go to hell. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was of God, that the Lord might perform his word. God said this was going to happen. God ordained this. God set the motion. God put the players into being. God was in charge of this thing. And no, God did not force them. God knew what the free will would. God knew what they would choose, and God used it. You think America is going to be the only nation in the world. So did Egypt. So did Babylon. So did Babel. Which he spanked by the hand of Ahijah, the Shunanite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. This was all prophecy. This is prophecy happening. When all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Well, they asked him a question. And we have none inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents. There is no rebellion. There's no fighting. There's no tea parties. There's no, oh, get Rehoboam out and put another man in. Every man to his tents, O Israel, and now David. See to thine own house. So all Israel went to their tents. But as for the children of Israel, they dwelt in the cities of Judah. Rehoboam reigned over them. And then King Rehoboam said, Hardarim, that was over the tribute, the tax man cometh, the IRS. And then the children of Israel stoned him with stones that he died. He killed the tax man. That's not what you're supposed to do. That's still murder. But King Rehoboam 
Made speed to get him up to his chariot. I would too. They were angry stones. To flee to Jerusalem. Now mark this verse. In 931 B.C. And Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And even to this day, 2013, on May 3rd, Israel is not a complete full nation. They have not been since this time. What other events are coming up in Israel? First Chronicles chapter 5, Gadites, Reubenites, and half-tribe of Manasseh will go into captivity. Israel that we're reading about right now under, under Jeroboam later on will go into captivity second. Checking the dates for you. Nine thirty one BC, Israel divides into two nations under Jeroboam and Rehoboam. I don't have the date, but uh First Chronicles five speaks about the Gadites, the Reubenites, and the half tribe of Manasseh goes into captivity. In 722, Israel, the ten tribes, go into the Syrian captivity. Six oh six, five ninety seven, five eighty six. Babylon invades Jerusalem. In five eighty six, Jerusalem, Judah, goes into captivity in Babylon. And God allowed it because it was judgment upon sin. You ain't going to get a Bible-believing, born-again Christian in the White House when you are living in sin and enjoying it. Romans chapter 1. And the lost are not being told about salvation. They're not being told about Jesus. I have been living at this dress in Ormond Beach for over a year now. Not one Baptist has come to my door. But oh, I had the JWs and I've had the Mormons come to my door. I've been driving around, walking around, shopping around, being around Daytona Beach, Volusia County. Since 2011, the end thereof, September 2011, I have not had one person hand me a gospel trap or try to out in the public. I only know of one church in the area of Lucid County that's out trying to win lost souls to Jesus. On the streets, at the front doors. I know individuals. I know a guy who goes out witnessing. He's got sore feet from diabetes, and his own pastor of his church doesn't want to have anything to do with it, and won't even allow a track rack in the in his church. I've heard of churches here in Florida that had their kids go looking for Easter eggs. Rather than lost souls. It's nonsense. Read Revelation chapter 3. What the last church age is. The last church age is a liar. The church is lying to itself saying we're increased with goods. We're doing great. Rah, rah, rah. God says you're miserable. You're naked. And you're blind. We have gone over the hump of Solomon. 
We used to have great preachers in America. We had great revivals in America. We've got great stories of America. Yes. And now we've gone over to the Rehoboam, Jeroboam age. As we go down even further. And we're going to get the golden calves. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't say that. You know what I noticed? I'll say it. My job. You know the number one thing you can find in magazines, you can find in grocery, uh, you can find in grocery store, you can find in a department store, you can find almost anywhere in ki any kind of catalog. You can find cow pattern stuff for your kitchen. You can buy a computer, and the computer box looks like a cow. Heck, they'll even put missing children in the back of a milk carton. We've got the cows. We got a holy cow. We're going down the road, and man, what we just seen with Rehoboam, we see in America, we're not taking the white wisdom. We're learning from the young idiots. We got a bunch of idiots in the in the in the White House. We got a bunch of idiots on Capitol Hill that come out of college has never had a day in their life. They won't even know what the inside of a toilet looked like, and they're going to tell you how to live life. They're probably so stupid, they probably realize or think that a potato comes from a grocery store and not the fields. They can't even realize that when, it, when their checkbook is in the negative figures, you stop writing checks. And that's what this king is doing. He wants more money because he keeps spending more. And what's the church doing about it? Absolutely nothing. You go for your Sunday morning service, and that's it. Hip la And you know I'm telling the truth, and you're angry because you know I'm preaching the truth and telling you the truth. We're going to see a downfall as we continue in Chronicles, and some of you ain't even going to come back and listen to Chronicles because I hurt you. Well, that's the salt. And listen, I don't like being the way I am. Listen, I want to tell people about Jesus. I want the lost to be saved. And I want to save the world. But I'm living in a day and age. Listen, I'm living Second Chronicles chapter 10. And it's only going to get worse. And we'll keep on studying. My brain will keep on going. The Lord will keep on blessing. 